Here we are on the three seven notes. How are the entries on the monthly statement calculated? Credit card users who do not pay their bills are charged a finance charge. For the convenience of the extra time, this finance charge is computed on any statement in which the consumer has a previous unpaid balance. The finance charge is based on the average amount the consumer owned each day of the billing cycle known as the average daily balance. So this finance charge formula, we're going to need this later, but in order to get that finance charge, we have to learn how to calculate, let's go grab a different color here, this average daily balance. And the average daily balance is the average amounts you owed each day of the billing period, which changes due to the purchases that you made. So we've got to go get that average daily balance and use the monthly periodic rate to multiply to get that finance charge eventually. So that's our goal here. So let's learn how to go calculate that average daily balance so we can do that. All right, so these steps here, we're gonna write out the steps and then use this little tiny credit calendar right here uh, in order to calculate the average daily balance. So let's look at these steps. And I also attached these steps in a PDF form as well that I'm referring to here from the text. Okay, so we've got this information from Elena Kay's credit card statement. And so we're gonna carefully follow these steps one through eight. So first, it says on a blank sheet of paper, draw a grid with seven boxes across and five boxes down. I think I'm gonna use the text tool here. You guys are handwriting on your blue sheets, but I'm gonna use the text tool here. Draw a grid seven boxes across and five boxes down. But we have been provided a grid already below. Okay. Okay, so they want us to basically make a little calendar here. On Elena's statement, you can find the number of days in the billing cycle is 31. So looking up here at her statement, do you see right here where it shows that her billing cycle has 31 days? So we want a calendar with 31 days. So since we have 35 days, they want you to shade in the last four days that are not going to be used. <clears throat> so basically, we want to cross out these four days. You do it however you want. We're not going to be using those ones. And then let's go right in the step. To determine the number of days in the billing cycle in shade in any unused days at the bottom. Step three, in one color, look at the posted days. of each of the charges or debits, put a plus sign for those 
and the charged amount on the calendar dates that have debits posted. Next, look at the posted dates of the payments made and put a minus side for the payments on the calendar. But we want to first, for step three, enter the billing date, 1113, in the corner of the last section. Not sure why I like already filled it in here with one thing and now we're changing it to another. Oh, that's technically step four. How annoying. Okay, so we're going to go like this. Okay, so step three was supposed to read this. So we just snuck it there in between. And then right here, this is technically supposed to be step four. So however you want to adjust this to make it work. So now we're going to go follow step three, entering the calendar dates. So we crossed out the four at the end, and then we want to set 1113 as the last date on this calendar. So go put a 13 right here. And then count backwards, 12, 11, 10, 9, eight, seven, and that's November 1st. So now we go into October 31st. And there's our credit calendar. Notice that although the billing date is in November, the billing cycle includes some days from October. Enter the month of the first day of your calendar and the month of the first day of the next month so that we're clear that this right here is October and this right here is November. All right, step four, look at the posted dates of each of the charges. Put a plus sign in the charge for the charged on the calendar and that have debits posted. Now look at the posted date of the payment made and put a minus sign. So I'm going to zoom in on this. So where does this come from? We're going to look back at her statement. Do you see how she has a charge for House Depot for $67? She has, and that's on October 25th. She has a charge for Bubble Wrap Shipping Company for $55 on October 29th, and then she has a payment on November 5th. So now look at the calendar items that we're gonna be adding in. Okay, so on November 25th, I'm gonna put plus 67. And then on November 29th, I'm gonna put, sorry, October, 
25th, I put 67. On October 29th, I'm going to put plus 55. And then on November 5th, we're going to say minus 160. That's the payment we made. So pluses are when we're adding purchases to the balance and minuses are when we make payments to that balance. Okay, and then that step was already typed in right here. And sorry, but that's supposed to be step four right there. Oh, there's the doggies. And so we're crossing this out. There's your step four already typed in. Okay, step five. The first day of the billing cycle is October 14th. The previous balance of 829.30 is in the amount owed. So let's go look at her statement again really quick. Do you see that her previous balance right here, 829.30? That's what we're going to show is the starting balance on that calendar. So let's go look at how they're showing that. Enter the previous balance on the first date of the calendar. And then you keep writing that balance. Notice that Elena made no purchases or payments until October 25th. So on each day from October 14th to October 24th, you keep that daily balance at 829.30. Enter this number on each of the dates. Notice that she made no purchases. Or payments until October 25th. So on each day, the daily balance is 829.30. Enter the previous balance on each of these dates. So we're going to make our calendar look like this. So 25th when you have that 67 in there. On step six, a $67 purchase was made. That amount is increased then by that 67. So we add 67 to the 829.30 and that turns into 896.30. So do you see that we added that in now? 
Now that amount keeps going until you get to the next plus 55. But let's go right in that step. And so that adding to the balance, we do the 8, 29, 30 plus 67, and that gives us 8, 96 and 30 cents. Put this new balance on the calendar every day until the next purchase is made on October 29th. Okay. Then a $55 purchase was made. Add in the next purchase on October 29th and continue it until the payment is made on November 5th. And the payment must be subtracted from the daily balance. Okay, so we added the 67 right here. So now this amount's going to continue 8.96 and 30 cents. Until we get here to this 55 and then we have to add in that 55. I forgot to get my Desmos calculator out. Well, I guess we don't need it. We can just use their calculations, right? So adding in the 55 is 951 and 30 cents. And that continues. Oops, until we get to the payment made of 160. And then notice it now goes down to 791 and 30 cents. Okay, <clears throat> so our calendar is filled in. Here comes step eight. To find the average daily balance, add up all the daily balances and divide by the number of days, which in this billing cycle is 31. We sum up the daily balances, we would get 26, 48, 30. We divide that sum by 31 and that gives us 854, 46. So step eight.
and let's type the work in down here. They said that comes to 2648830 divided by 31 days and that equaled 85446. Okay, so that calendar, by writing out those balances, this was my balance on this day, this was my balance on this day, etc. We now added it all up and divided by 31. This right here, this whole calculation, was to be able to get our average daily balance. Okay, let's go see what they want us to do with that. So average daily balance is 854.46. Is there a better time during the billing cycle when Elena could have made her payment so that the average daily balance would have been less? So where would she have made her payment in order to make the average daily balance less? Well, as soon or as early as you can make that payment would have reduced the balance drastically from the get-go. So I'm going to put that in here. Now the finance charge is the average daily balance times the monthly periodic rate. So here we go calculating. And so if we go back to the table, do you see right here the monthly periodic rate? is 1.415 so 854 46 times 1.415 Now that comes to 1209, and so I'm looking at this going, huh, I didn't do something. What am I supposed to do when I put in a percent again? Remember how we're supposed to convert this to the decimal always? 0.0415, and there's my $12.09. So there's my finance charge. So remember to convert this 
0.0415. And look, we put right there as a decimal to help you remember. Okay, when, finally here, when might Elena have made her purchases during the billing cycle in order to gr decrease her finance charge? So to, to do, decrease your finance charge, you want the lowest average daily balance possible. The soonest you can make the payment, the lower the balances will be. So anytime sooner you can make that would be better. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here at example one. And before um, you watch the video for example two, or I may not even post a video for example two, I want you to try the calendar on your own and then we'll check it tomorrow when I'm back but you're doing the same thing now with this next credit card statement. We're notice this time that he has 31 days in the billing cycle. Notice they want you to calculate the average daily balance. Okay, notice it's blank right here. After you get the average daily balance, then you can calculate the finance charge like we just did before. And then once you have those two things, once you have that finance charge, then you can do the new balance from today's notes. And then what is Mark's available credit? You can subtract and get that. If the $200 payment had been posted on 613, would the finance charge have been higher or lower? How do you know? Here's a little calendar for you to use for Mark's average daily balance calculations. So I'm going to pause it at this time and let you try the calendar on your own, please. Work with your tables to see if you can figure out how many days are you going to cross out on the calendar, what dates are you going to put on there and backdate it, and then start putting the balances. Here's his credits. You know, I charged 251, charged 7250, charged for the Sylvia Corp, and then there's one payment of 200 made. Okay, good luck. Go try that calendar. Follow steps one through eight.